Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-beings to watching every single Shonen Jump anime in existence that is currently available available to us in English in some kind of form. Starting with the main big one being Gintama, as we are getting closer and closer to the end of it all, and the other two series. It's gonna be crazy when we finish Gintama. When, when bro, we get it's there, insane. yeah, and then we can finally go like, all right, everyone, now we can finally watch Kuroko's, Kuroko's basketball. basketball. <laughs> <laughs> And the other two series that we have uh, in the back, in the pot. actually, there's more. It's Koriko's Basketball, and then it is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and then whenever GX, there's yeah. new anime episodes for them, Chainsaw Man and uh, Jujutsu GJK, Kaisen. Yeah. That's correct for when they come out. Uh, and maybe we'll revisit that for when maybe Sakamoto Days gets it, if it gets a good anime adaptation. First, we've reserved the right. If it's a bad one, we can wait until we get batches of it. Well, Sakam- isn't it being Netflix produced? That worries me. It um, is, but then, but I feel like they've also done the Dungeon Meshi series, and that was the way that everyone wanted part... Um, part 6? Yes. It was literally yeah, the, the format of... over what- by Netflix? Yeah, it wasn't like the big dump that Netflix is known for. It was like a here's one one this week, and then one the next week, and it was literally the way everyone wanted it to be. And it got uh, it got to be able to grow and expand the fan base as people watched in and were like, "Oh man, let's do this!" Like, "Oh, let's draw fan art of this moment." It could go here. literally the way people wanted <laughs> JoJo Part Six. That way it was denied that. No one was allowed to just kind of take a breather and absorb it in. It was all... If Part 7 doesn't get made, I am completely blaming Netflix for that. Like, 110% fuck Netflix. Yeah, it was uh, it was a bad way of doing it. It was, it, was very, <laughs> it was very unfortunate the way of seeing it. So, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But that's definitely one that I'm excited for. Especially because the main VA will also be the same one for... Uh, is the same one as Gintoki. So, there's plenty of reasons to be excited for it. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. So wait, Sakamoto is is Joseph Joestar? Yes, <laughs> he is. That's odd. That doesn't. I don't know that that fits. But okay, we'll see. I, I think It'll it does fit. Be good. I mean, this guy bangs. So. He does. He does an, a, the, an amazing work. So I think it will work out perfectly. Plus, it's another silver-haired character. He's got this. <laughs> He's got this one hundred percent. So yeah, we'll be talking today about episodes two sixty-six to two sixty-nine. I believe is the one. Yes. And also, I'll be talking about uh, the Jump Festa Anime Tour 2014 because we are going to be started in the era of Gintama with a little circle at the end, um, which is the one of the many ways of Gintama coming back and being like, hey, we're back, <laughs> that they will make reference to in a later episode that I'll talk about more um, there. But it's like a slight name change. All they did was add a little circle to it, and it is pronounced basically the same way, and there's jokes around it too. Um, but we'll start off with the, uh, Jump Festa Anime Tour 2014, which will go very quickly because this is just their way of saying, hey, we're back. Um, so let's get right into it. The name of the episode is, there are times when I can't sleep because I notice something's left on my face after getting into the futon. And I believe there's another title afterwards, but I don't remember the name of that one. Um, it starts with the, with the, with the crew standing up and being like, hey, saying hello to everyone and then uh, recognizing that it's been a very long time since they've actually done this uh, and that they need to properly say hello to everyone. And it's weird to do the Gintama intro without uh, the exterior shot because people won't know that they're being serious or if they're joking or not, which I thought was very funny. And then after that intro, we get into the return of a character that has not been here since around episode 80-something, uh, season two, near the end of it, it is the spirit of Lake Toya, the sword in uh, the G- Gintoki sword. And he's there to tell him specifically that the, the reason he's back is that the Gintama anime has failed. And the reason that they failed is that they weren't able to, uh, they weren't able to properly take advantage of marketing v- uh, fighting games. Uh, because if you don't know this, they break it down is that fighting games are the number one way for any Shonen Jump uh, <laughs> Um, 
any Shonen Jump series to make some good money for it because as long as you have a bunch of characters that can do special moves, you will automatically fit into a fighting game and that will make you money and it will expose you more. Uh, but the problem is that nobody in Gintama has any special moves at all. So he has to try and teach them special moves. Um, and he's also trying to teach it through... Teach it to all members to it, so then he goes to his mom, which he calls her, like, various things, and she is teaching Katsura the special technique, which is basically just saying ring-a-ding-dong, which is apparently a real Japanese song that I looked up after this guy. I was like, that, that, that AD is, like, too well made for this to be, like, an actual jokey thing at the end. It has to be a real song. And it is, in fact, a real song <laughs> that someone actually That's made. That's very funny. <laughs> that is hilarious. <clears throat> Um, so he starts singing Ring-a-Ding-Dong, and he goes like, whatever, it sounds like you're just trying to replace the main singer for that song for whatever reason. Uh, they cut to, uh, her mom again, and this time she's training Hasegawa, and she's teaching Hasegawa the multi-form technique, and they're complaining that they taught the multi-form technique to the most useless member on the cast, which is Hasegawa. Um, and then she's also teaching them to do the Ring-a-Ding-Dong, and they do, the little, like, a weird little dance, and then also starts trying to sing the song. Uh, they cut to Lake Toya's dad, who is going. He, he calls him like different spirit soul things. So he calls him the soul of the cabaret club, and he's in the cabaret club and he's teaching um, Otai how to do the dodonre, <laughs> and she's dressed up as Goku as well. And I think her little uh, instead of what what is it that Goku has on his gi? Is it turtle, or is it kame? Uh, it, well, it's it's. It's Kame, I think, and then it becomes King Kai's later on. Okay. I think hers is just, like, Tai, like, Otai or something, is something on it. I think that's what's on hers. Um, so, yeah, she knows the Dodon Ray, and then, um, like, Toya's mom starts getting angry at the dad, because why is he spending time inside of the Cabaret Club? Um, and this ends up with uh, Hasegawa trying to calm her down and say, like, hey, man, don't, don't worry about it. And Otai tries to do the same for the dad, but he says something wrong, and it causes her to do the finger, um, Frieza's finger blast, because he makes mention after she does the Dodon Ray that she's actually stronger than Frieza is at this exact moment. Um, so she uses Frieza's finger blast, and it causes them to have a gigantic explosion. Uh, during the explosion, the aftermath, the mom who is dying tells, like, Toya that it's up to you now to take, uh, to defeat the evil that is... Um, Otai, um, and she dies and she faints down and Lake Toya goes like, I'll take it from here. Um, and she also says, here, take my disciples and it's just Katsura and the mini Hasegawas and he says, okay, I'll do it. Um, and Otai shows up and then they're going to have their final battle and that's when Lake Toya activates his special move, which is the do Dodenza, which is the ultimate form of like groveling in Japan. <laughs> It's like the ultimate, like, when you really need to say sorry, you go down on, like, you do the, you do this specific form. That's the only way to truly apologize. <laughs> it's like the, the last form of it. And, and everyone obviously is angry at him and they attack him. And that's where it basically ends. Because I think he wakes, uh, Gintoki wakes up and he's like, well, that was, that was just weird. And then it ends with, it looks like they're about to end the show. And then that's when, um, they don't end it. And Kondo shows up and he says, hey, man, what the hell? I thought this was supposed to be the return. And there's no Shinsengumi action going on here. <laughs> there's no one, no members of the Shinsengumi were here. And then he goes Super Saiyan 4 ape form, golden ape. Um, and then that's when all the other characters start to come in to do their cameo uh, and, and say a thing. Okita shows up. Uh, Hijikata shows up. Um, uh, Sachan shows up as well and says some stuff about getting married to Kentucky as, his, as she always does. And then it just kind of ends right there. And it ends with the song of Elizabeth, like, I think, dancing to uh, Ring-a-Ding-Dong as it, like, goes off and says, like, hey, that, w that was the special. And that is the Jump Festus anime tour thing. It's an episode to kind of say, hey, it's been a really long time and now we're back. How'd you feel about it, Zen? It was, it was funny. It was pretty much nothing. It was very much just like yeah. a did you miss us thing, which, you know, is not as effective when we aren't missing them, obviously. <laughs> Wait, um, I miss it every single time when <laughs> we have to say, like, not this week. Sorry. <laughs> oh, true. True. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we do have, there's a specific hole where we go, like, is it a Gintama week? It's looking like no, and we go, man. 
okay, <laughs> try again next week. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. It, it hits a little bit different when you've been waiting like months and then they're here at the, the, the special Jump Festa stuff. <laughs> Um, also nice to see the return of the Bleach character. I like that they call him, like, uh, they try and say, like, do you think he's a Bleach character? And then their response is, no way. Bleach would never have a lame character like this in it. <laughs> Which I thought was so very... True. So true. And the way that they keep trying to be like, do you remember me? He's like, no, no. Actually, yeah, yes. That, that was probably the funniest part, I think, when he was like, well, I don't want to say no. <laughs> so I'm just going to say, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. And then he starts like coughing to be like, uh, uh, remember season two, end of episode 82? It's like, oh, sorry, say that again. <laughs> like they keep doing the back and forth coughing with each other until Shibachi's like, hey, just talk normally. You're obviously just talking about the same figure. So I thought it was a very nice way of getting back into some Gintama stuff. Plus that song by the end of it did kind of, the ring and ding dong one did get kind of caught up in my head. I was like, this is just a... <laughs> it, it did. I was like, god damn it. They got me here. Son of a bitch. Gonna be ring-a-ding-donging this whole fucking time. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that's stopping the ring-a-ding-dong from being the actual opening to this one is the fact that I'm afraid that it would hit my channel. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. It might. Yeah, it might. It very well might. So we won't for, for now. But yeah, a nice little way to get back into it. And now for real, let's get into it. Um, episode 266, Zen will be taking over from now, and we'll go for episode 266, which is called, You Can Never Pause at the Perfect Time. Go ahead, Zen. Episode 266, uh, it starts with an introduction. I'm gonna give a little anecdote from this introduction. Um, it starts with Gintoki, like, going to give some kind of press conference sort of deal. Mm -hmm. Um, and... At some point in this, someone cough like really fucking loud, and uh, I have like noise canceling headphones now that I, d I didn't used to have those. Like, but this is my first time ever really re like recording with them. Um, and when that person coughed, I was like, "Holy fucking shit!" There's a person in my house coughing <laughs> right now. <laughs> like, I had to like get up and check and like make sure. That there was not a person in my house coughing. Uh, there wasn't. Don't worry. I'm good. You're good. But uh, it scared the shit out of me. That's hilarious. But yeah, he's like uh, giving an apology for not ending the series on the movie like they should have. <laughs> um, and he's like, I'm sorry that we didn't end the series on the movie. It was just, it was just really touching that our movie made so much money. I didn't think it was going to happen. But now all the fucking executives want more money and I can't do anything to stop it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it was really funny. And then um, it cuts back to the actual show and Atose is coming in to get rent. And Gintoki's like, hey, I don't, I don't have the rent. Uh, but then she freezes in place and then he goes outside and realizes that everyone is frozen. And basically time has completely uh, frozen. For like everyone except for him, uh, Kagura, and Shimpachi. And he's like, oh man, time froze right when I got this awesome weird clock. That sucks. <laughs> and he pulls out this uh, this weird clock. And it turns out that's like the clock of the universe or whatever. Um, and so he, like aliens crash landed and... He got the clock from them because they're like dead and they're like we need you to to take the clock take the the universe clock and and guard it for us please um and he ends up taking it against shimpachi's uh wishes because he's like don't give it to him he's a fucking idiot please um and then they're trying to figure out what happened and they realize that the clock must have broken when gintoki hit the alarm clock in anger and it, it busted it and so they're trying to figure out how to fix it um and gintoki's like no it's cool man we, it, uh, being trapped in time is actually awesome because you can just fondle girls boobs and they won't know because they're frozen in time and uh, he tries to act offended by it but then he ends up having like written tickets that he's hiding that's like free booby fondling tickets and so kagura gets pissed off and goes to find gengai and is like, I'm going to get him to fix the clock. But he's also frozen in time. 
so um, they're like, okay, well, what if we put the clock in front of him with a note, and they, they figure out that if they move the hands of the clock, time skips around? So they're like, well, what if we put the clock where he can see it, we leave a note, and then we move time forward? Um, and they keep doing that, and they go so far that Gengai is, is dead, so they go way too far. <laughs> so they have to go backward. Um... But then he, like, is picking his nose for an extremely long amount of time. And then they get to another few... They're, like, bouncing around, and they just keep getting to, like, these shitty locations. Um, they finally end up getting the the booger out of his nose, and it's, like, fucking massive. Um, and they're like, okay, finally, put, put time forward. Let's move time forward. And they jump time ahead, and it shows... Uh, Hasegawa holding Gengai like Goku holding Raditz <laughs> while a Piccolo knockoff alien shoots the special beam cannon through them both and kills them both. And uh, I remember Shimpachi like throws his head to the sky and screams like how did the future end up this way? <laughs> and then uh, they find out that they, no matter what they do they keep finding out that Hasegawa uh, ends up dying. And, uh, yeah, I think it ends with him getting executed by the, uh, the special beam cannon before it jumps to the next episode. Yeah, before this, they were, like, trying to save his life because they, like, throw away the booger. And they threw the booger at the, at the, at the truck, and then they see Hasegawa died, so they assume that Hasegawa was the one driving the truck, so they throw it at, like, a, um, a box, and then they, and then they learn it was Hasegawa was in the box because he died, and so then they move the, the box to somewhere else. And then they find out that he died there as well from natural causes. <laughs> and they're like, how does someone, how do we stop someone from dying from a natural cause? It's like the, the universe just wanted them. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the end of this one. How do you feel about it, Zen? It's pretty funny. Uh, the, the bit where he was like, how... How did life end up like this? It made me laugh. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, all in all, it was it was good. Good stuff. I liked it because there was a setup where um, when they bring Hasegawa to the new location, I said that looks a lot like a the place you like 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 almost Dragon Ball esque. But I was just like, that's a weird looking location. And it did in the back of my head, it was like, that really looks like Dragon Ball. So when the Piccolo thing showed up, I was like, it was a setup for Dragon it Ball. Was, it was Dragon Ball all along. I knew it. I also like that they, someone, apparently on my Twitter, because I said, uh, get ready for Sporking Zero when I saw it happen. Um, someone took it as this was a specific scene from Sparking Zero, and they got angry that they they named the special beam cannon special beam attack instead. And it took them a <laughs> while to look at it and go like, "Oh wait a minute, that's not Piccolo." <laughs> that's, that's so fucking funny. Oh my god. Yeah, they were legitimately worried, and they're like, "Oh my god!" Up until I noticed that that wasn't Piccolo, I thought that they had fucked up the translation for special beam cannon. That's amazing. <laughs> yep, really good really funny um the bits where the 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 bit where they were talking about specifically like hey man i don't think you understand here we're talking about unlimited boob fondling and then after three thousand years you'll be done with her and it will like you'll you'll tire yourself out and you won't care for it anymore and he's like after three thousand years you won't have anything more <laughs> after that much fondling it's too much but the part that I liked is that after they go off to, like, it's clear that they're up to no good, Kagura shoots them, and she goes, like, you guys are degenerates. As long as I'm here protecting time, you won't be able to do any of that. Now rob that bank right there and get out there. Like, she she immediately goes, like, Alyssa, none of you are going to do anything illegal here. Now rob the bank of the money that you got from there, and then let's move on. <laughs> It was very funny the way she was immediately like, listen, there's limits here. Don't do that. It's okay to rob from the bank. That's okay. <laughs> there's also a joke here that I was like, I'm surprised that they actually in some way were able to say this. When he was doing like the fake marriage um, set up with, um, uh, with the weather girl. Uh, he says something like, uh, I want to create a future where I get to dock with Katsuno Anna's Ketsu Ono Ketsu Anna, something like that. And then it says in the, tr the translation, fakely, it's censored, but the translation literally says asshole, 
I was like, holy shit, <laughs> really? That's an insane thing. <laughs> it's an insane thing to say on multiple levels. Um, but it was, uh, I was taken aback by it. I was like, this is why you guys are always in, th- in constant threat of losing your time slot. It's because you keep making jokes like this. You keep making jokes of saying like, oh man, we really need to tone it down. And then you're also saying like, I can't wait to dock that woman's asshole when I get the chance. Can't get, can't be saying that all the time. Um, apparently, also this public apology thing, which funny enough, if uh, if you remember Shonen Archive from way long ago, when we missed uh, our second upload week, I think the the picture I used from that is taken from this episode. I had no idea. Really? I, just, I looked That's up. Funny. Yeah, I looked up like Gintoki apologizing. And into Google back when it was something that you could use as a search engine. And when I typed it in, I got that picture. I was like, that's perfect. And then when I saw it today, I was like, I remember that one. I remember the idea. Remember, oh, man, remember when we said 10 episodes at a time? And then we're like, yeah, we need to, we need to dial that You're like, yeah, this is, this is not a realistic. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, a realistic goal. we'll go like five. And then, and then there was another part of me that... <laughs> Uh, actually this is funny this is funny because this came up pretty recently because i was getting into gundam and there was a specific episode of a zeta gundam where the uh, the main character says um it's because i'm autistic and then i immediately stopped the episode and go this was made in the 70s was he actually autistic <laughs> so <laughs> so i went to go do research and I found a Gundam podcast where they were specifically talking about, like, a full-on, like, deep-dive history of the search and history of everything. It's like, I'm going to save this for after I finish the series and do that. But as I was going through their back catalog, I realized they were doing entire episodes for one episode. And I was like, man, maybe I, those people at the beginning said we're right. It's like, typically people only do, like, one or two episodes t- doing deep dive. They don't do five batches at a time like we do or higher sometimes for certain arcs. Yeah, it's it's rough it is maybe that's something to look forward to after we finish Gintama. maybe we'll do we'll talk about that later it would take us forever though if we started doing one at one episode at a time <laughs> but it already kind of takes us forever so i don't know point is um i thought it was funny uh so yeah the the apology thing i like that setup apparently that's also based off of a real politician that happened with a scandal um like he, that's the reason why he has like that weird hairstyle at the beginning is that he's he has the exact same hairstyle as the politician when he was making the actual apology. Um, oh, that's funny. <laughs> it is another. That's pretty. Good. Another classic, good old Japanese reference that usually will get lost on most people. But yeah, I, I, it was a good setup, a good return for it. So let's go on to episode two sixty seven, which is called "Even a Matsui Stick Can't Handle Some Kinds of Dirt." Go ahead, then. 267, they are trying to uh, fix the clock, and they realize that it's low on battery, that like it's, it's out of battery power. So that's how they have to fix it. And so they decide to go back to the ship to try to find a spare battery, and they realize that the Shinsengumi were investigating, and they might have already taken the battery, and they find out that um, Hijikata has it, and he's got it, like, in his grip, and they can't get his hand open. So they're like, okay, shit, what do we do? Well, let's just keep going forward in time until he stops holding it. And they keep doing that, and then uh, he ends up holding it for the rest of his life. So he goes all the way to his funeral, still clutching the battery. So they're trying to figure out how to get it out, and they end up ripping out his arm. Uh, and, like, d- pulling it off of his body. So they replace his arm with a Matsui stick, and, like, it'll be fine. Um... But then the battery ends up leaving his hand and going into the the Matsui stick, which then turns it into like a cyborg fist. Um, And so it's even harder to get it back. And then they're like, all right, what if we... They they find um, Katsura, and he's playing catch with uh, Elizabeth. And they're like, all right, what if we rip the arm off of Hichikata, put it on Katsura, and then when Katsura throws what he thinks is the baseball, he'll throw the battery. But then when they do that and they move time forward, he just shoots the fist like a rocket punch. And he's just like, that's my ultimate Matsui technique. Um, they chase after the rocket punch to try to find where it went. And it hits Otai in the head. Um, and then Kentucky's like, well, shit, we can't, we can't do anything to stop it. So what if we, 
what if we change the sound effect so it doesn't sound like it hurts as bad as it did before? <laughs> <laughs> this is and true. so they change this the sound effect to to it's like ham or ham or something yeah, ham yeah yeah and then uh it ends up becoming a person named hamson and uh the punch knocks the, the like gives otai amnesia and she ends up getting married to hamson while kube uh has a dick and balls made out of the sfx that were left behind from hamson because gintoki did that mm-hmm. um they see that they they end up like punching each other instead of using wedding rings and it shatters the rocket punch because otai shatters it with her bare hand um and like oh we, my, oh my god we got the battery and they grab it, but it's a triple-A battery instead of a double-A battery, so it doesn't work. And then the, it runs out of time completely, which then also freezes the three of them. Um, but then Hamson can move freely, and he had the correct battery the whole time. And then he he puts the clock in the or put the battery in the clock, and he turns back time because he's like, you can't you can't leave me in charge of this shitty show. Like, what are you doing? Don't make me do this. <laughs> um, and then he turns time back all the way. Uh, and then it begins again, and Gintoki goes to smack his alarm clock like he did, which what, is what broke the clock to begin with, but then the clock is not there, so it, it it's all returned to normal. Yes. And then at the end of this episode, the press conference continues, and he starts talking about how do you pronounce the new Gintama, because as you can see here, it's different now, because it has a little circle here at the... It has a circle... Um, and I think I can explain this one because of my very, very, I was so excited because I was telling my friend, I was like, is this the reason why it's here? And he's like, yeah, basically. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even realize this. So it is a word pun. If you were watching it, so if the way that the, um, he says here has how it looks like in Hiragana. And if you realize in Gintama, the t- the T-A sound the little character that it has there, which is like a T and then two like lines to the side of it, that makes the T sound in Hirogana. And in Hirogana is when you add a circle or when you add the little slashes up top, it changes the consonant sound. So for T, it doesn't have one with circle. It has one with the two little lines and it changes it to the D sound. So T becomes duh. That's why he says Gindama. Because it's because when he looked at it, he's like, um, he's like, what do you think it would be pronounced as? He says, oh, Gindama. And the reason is, is because there the way that the circle, the what the circle does when you add it to the hiragana, is that it changes the sound to be a P sound. So that would be Gimpad Gimpama, which is not correct because there is no. That's not how there is no circle with the T sound. That's why he says D. So that's why they keep also moving it around to the other one because the name actually doesn't make any sense of how to say it. And he's just fucking with them. Yeah, I like when he's like, uh, You think that's fucking funny? You think this is a game? Like every time he pronounces it wrong? <laughs> yes. And it's so funny when I was going through it because, like, it really is. This makes so much sense because it really is just nonsense. <laughs> what he's saying is that he's bullshitting them. And he's just like, Oh, yeah, here's the circle. You're pronouncing it. It's basically just Gintama. But it, it, it was making me uh, laugh because I was realizing, it was like, Wait a minute. I know that little circle thing is supposed to be the P sound, but I'm pretty sure that the, the character used with it isn't there for the, the, the T sound. And I was right. And I was like, Oh, man. The, the small minute by minute lessons paying off, Zen. <laughs> Very good. Slowly it, but surely. Yeah. And then my friend was telling me specifically so much of this show and its wordplay really comes out when you understand Japanese. And it's also, I also realize it as well how hard it is to actually translate Gintama to make it funny in any kind of way. <laughs> yeah. It must That's be. That's probably not the easiest. Yes, because as I was explaining, it was like, this must sound like a crazy person saying it. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, I get it. That's funny. <laughs> but when you actually be like, okay, so here's the translation for it. The only way to explain it, if you were to d- directly translate the joke, is either don't explain it at all and just, just be like, here you go. Here's the joke. You're not going to get it. Or it's the opposite fan sub moment where it's like, here's the joke. And then here's the paragraph line explaining why <laughs> this joke is supposed to be funny. <laughs> 
So, really nice thing at the end. And just to get to just talk about this episode in general, how'd you feel about it, Zen? Uh, it was good. I thought the resolution was pretty funny. Mm. When when Hamson was like, all right, fuck this. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do uh, that. He sends them back to the beginning. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I thought it was funny that Kentucky gave Kube uh, a, a little dick and balls made out of the, the SFX. I thought yeah. that was funny. It stays. Uh, <laughs> that yeah, was my it, favorite. it remains. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was very funny. Whole, whole thing was good. I I liked all of it. Yeah. I have no complaints. Yeah, so some good bits here. The 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 robot arm, the robot punch, very funny. The way that they they go forward in time for Hasegawa, not Hasegawa, for uh, Hijikata to see if he would finally open his uh, his uh, his uh, hand, and he just never does, and he's like buried with batteries. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> As an old man. It's very funny. Um, the bit here at the beginning where they say, uh, where they show, like, the explanation of how did we get here with Gengai basically taking the um, the special beam cannon. And they say, like, no matter what we do in this specific line, um, no, because of we've interfered with the timeline, no matter what we do now, we've entered a situation where both of these characters will now die because we've interfered with their uh with their timeline and they show like all the various different death scenes and it's like um i think from obviously the most obvious one is the dragon ball one there's one point where there's a death note there's one where it's on attack on titan and these are also all death scenes taken from other anime uh animes and manga stuff uh, one of them is from uh, I, the girl who left through time i think the one with the crossing railroad i think that's where that one's from it was very nice it was very funny and then the the actuality was like actually we didn't even need their help at all it's not broken it just needs batteries <laughs> so they just like <laughs> fucked with them for no reason uh that's good like you said the ham stuff very funny uh especially when the when they when they go forward and the wedding's happening and <laughs> Shimpachi's like, we can't put a stop to this. She's getting married to a sound effect. And Kagura's like, oh my god, she looks so beautiful right now. <laughs> In her yeah. like, I was like, wow, yeah, she looks really beautiful. <laughs> she's stunning. Yeah, it was so funny. She was so supportive of her getting married to the fucking ham sound effect. <laughs> also, the, that QV shit was so funny when every time they would cut back to them talking, they were just frozen in place. Like, on the floor, like, <laughs> devastated that it was not them marrying uh, Otai. Which is very good, and yeah, it was a good good return here in general. Nice little arc to get you back into the swing of things. Apparently, the other one is from Gravity. That's the one. The one I'm not recognizing is the one from Gravity. I haven't seen oh, that, okay. so I would not know. But all right, before we move on, I forgot to mention it at the beginning of the last one. How do you feel about the new OP and ED for this one? Good. I really like them. the The OP is really fun. Um, the ED I don't like quite as much, but I, I think the OP is very fun. I like the the ED visuals. I think those are nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has it has good it has good yeah, visuals. Yeah. I don't really love the song. But. Yeah, well, well, we'll see if if it can get it around there. We'll see. <laughs> the true test is when they get put into an actual fight scene or for the end of an arc thing. That's the true test for any OP and ED in Gintama nowadays. <laughs> if they make it there, um, but yeah, nice. Let's move on to the next episode, episode 268, which is an inspector's love begins with an inspection. Go ahead, Zen. So uh, Yamazaki is doing a stakeout, uh, and then he, I think he's supposed to be staking out uh, Kentoki, but he ends up doing, or he sees um, Tama, and he falls in love with Tama, and his little notebook uh, that he writes in is doing the the thing that it did when he became obsessed with Anpan, where it just starts saying Tamasan over and over again instead of Anpan. Tamasan, 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 Tamasan. Yeah, and then uh, he's like, fucking Kondo's like, oh my god, this guy's insane. Uh, what what is happening? And um, Hichikata is like, you realize that this is just you. Like we need to do the same shit that you're doing all the time. Like we need to just stop. Letting people be freaks, please. Um, and he's like, "Don't compare me to this. I'm I'm way more sweet than this. Don't compare me to this <laughs> insanity." Um, 
eventually they uh, come to this conclusion that like it, it would be good to to marry them like together to to have him and um Tama and Tama get married because then uh it would like clear Gintoki of any suspicion and being like a a patriot because that's why they're they're staking him out because he's yeah. like a uh, he's, was he's in the, the war. Yeah, they it's this is uh, taking place after Hijikata realizes that Gintoki is the white well, Yaksha, which was after the Thorny Arc. When he said out loud, I'm the white Yaksha, and then he said, I had no idea. Hello, white Yaksha. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're investigating him, and I think it's Okita that's like, if they get married, then everyone would be chill, and it would be fine. Because uh, he's, he's like Gintoki's bro, kind of. Uh, so they have this, like, meeting where they're like, uh, I think it's Gintoki and Kagura are playing Tama's parents. Yeah. And Kondo and Hijikata are doing it for Yamazaki. <laughs> and uh, they're, like, brutally critiquing one another. They're like, wow, this isn't, shouldn't a robot maid be better than this? This is a little pathetic, don't you think? Like, <laughs> they're just being awful to each other over and over again. Yeah, um, giving points and taking away points. Yeah, they have, like, a scoring system in place and stuff. Um, and eventually they're like, all right, why don't we have Tama cook then? Um, we can, we can have Tama cook for you guys. And Tama's version of cooking is, uh, like eating the food and then grossly vomiting it back out. And they're like, yeah, this is, this is how Tama cooks. How you feel about that? You loving that? <laughs> this is how Tama cooks food. Uh, and she like throws it up. And they're sitting there, and they're like, "Is this uh, is this? Do you want it for you? Are you like, are you liking this? <laughs> this Why is, don't you eat it? Go this eat is, this. This is the ultimate. If you don't love her at her worst, you don't deserve her at her best moment. Yeah, and like... it's um, fuck, fuck. What was the food called? But it, it's something with an M. I don't remember the exact type of food. Uh, yeah, this was, was. Me- this was mentioned in previous episodes as well. I think it was at the end of the Shonen Jump special. He throws like a ma... something. Fuck me. It's I like... don't remember the name of it. Mm. Mi- Mioji or something. Mioji, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, they're like, is this really Is this really it? Is, it? is this food? And he's like trying to eat it, and he's trying to eat it so fucking hard. Um... And then I think she ends up making an onpon for him. Um, and he goes to eat it, and then he gets sick, and he vomits on Tama, and then Tama attacks him in return. Let's move. Yes, that is, uh, that is how it all goes down. That is the end of the episode. <clears throat> Apparently, trivia, this is the first time that Okita has ever been inside of uh, Tose shop. <laughs> Really? That's interesting. Uh, apparently in 268 episodes, it took that long for him to enter this place. I didn't realize that until someone just left a note here saying, like, oh, yeah, this is the first time. I'm like, really? I, I guess that would be true. What a, what a weird thing to happen here. Uh, how'd you feel about this one, Zen? It was all right. It was pretty funny. I liked when they were, like, docking points from each other and they were having, like, the, the awful, <laughs> like, marriage competition yeah uh, i thought that was pretty funny it was, it was all right do they still do those i the... can't imagine yes but maybe i don't know maybe in japan do you, do you think that they still do the fuck what is it called? the horrible like marriage meetup thing yeah well obviously there's still arranged marriages because i want to say arranged marriages might still be a thing and let me double check that because that might just sound like really racist and that's just something like i heard from the simpsons a long time ago and that is not where you want to be going for any form of like oh yeah it's it still exists they talked about it in the simpsons uh let me see still a thing google please I guess it kind of depends on on the regions. It might be a yeah, that makes sense. So hmm, yeah. The the this marriage proposal feels like a real bummer way of like getting married, but maybe at the same time, who knows? <laughs> maybe this is a way yeah, to just get. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just like get it over with or something. Maybe, I don't know. This is the only way you would get like two extremely shy people to get with each other. I guess 
Like, it, it, if there were ever a case of, it, like, it, would Yamazaki ever actually be able to get the courage to ask out Tama? No. Would Tama as a robot ever actually ask anyone out? No. So maybe in this specific scenario, it maybe it works out in the marriage, uh, can, <laughs> the marriage meeting can work out. Who knows? Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess that makes sense-ish. Yeah, in some kind of weird, uh, logic kind of way, um, maybe it does. Uh... But yeah, it made me think. I was like, is this really a Stella thing? But uh, the the thing I liked here is that it really shows off all the best parts about Tama, which is that Tama is just a very uh, cheerful person that makes it like what Yamazaki's idea of like the reason he even falls for Atama is that at his literal lowest doing stuff for work, it was someone there to be like, hey man, you can get through it. And that's enough for him, and I think that's actually a very sweet way to fall for someone, as opposed to just looking at someone and being like, oh my god, they're just so pretty. Which, to be fair, Tama is pretty, but it's more than that. It's a feeling of, she's also pretty, but also, when I'm at my lowest, she makes me feel happy, and that's good enough for me. Yeah. It's like, that yeah. makes sense. That does make a whole lot of sense. And she shows it off here specifically, too, at the end, when trying to also cheer him up. So I thought it was a good reason for it. And it is also funny because it also kind of feels like one of those pairings where you would probably see it like in a fan fiction somewhere <laughs> where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, like the weirdest possible pairing you could imagine. Oh, yeah. This is my Tama X Yamazaki fanfic. And this is how I'm going to make them <laughs> <laughs> make them work. Obviously, to combine the Shinsengumi and <laughs> the Odd Jobs crew, you need to have a go between. And this is how it goes. It's very funny how it feels really set up for that perfectly. <laughs> But the, the difference is that at the end of that fanfic, they would get married and figure something out. Where in Gintama, he, <laughs> he throws up on her, and then that's basically yeah, it that's right the end there. Of the game there. Yeah, that's the end of the game right there. I liked when Okita shows up, and he was like, um, "I'm gonna get this all working out," and he goes to give him like a thumbs up to be like, "I got this for you, Yamazaki." And Yamazaki, in his head is going, "Oh no." Not him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last person I would want to know this is him. And he gives him like a face like, don't worry, I got your back on this one. And in his own way, he is actually trying to help Yamazaki. And I realize this when he says it because he actually goes in there and says, can you get let Yamazaki fuck your robot girl real quick? Because he's acting really <laughs> weird. And we need him to stop being weird. And he's like, excuse me? And they're like, excuse me? Like, f do what? He's like, yeah, your sex robot over there. He's like, that's not a sex robot. That's <laughs> that's our, that's Tomo, you asshole. Um, and he go and he like is super blunt about everything. He's like, listen, man, he really needs something out of this. He's not doing his job. Um, you can either let him fuck the robot or maybe, you know, maybe there can be a marriage thing. And through complete weird happenstance he does get set up to where it would be the perfect slam dunk moment he just needs yamazaki to actually do it it's like the most deceive like the in a weird roundabout way he actually was the world's greatest wingman by being absolutely terrible at it and such to such a degree that when he asked his first question when he did the follow-up they were like hey you know what that doesn't sound as bad i was like this is deceptively good at it but you would never assume that from okita <laughs> just because you would assume he would immediately fucked up but i, I like that bit to it and it actually did seem kind of nice from him because it seemed like he was actually genuinely like all right i did the best i could it's up to you now good luck <laughs> i've done everything i could i asked them could yeah they... i've done all i have yeah he's like listen i tried to make it so you could have sex with the robot that didn't work out maybe marriage is just as good all right, later. Peace out. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm off to go <laughs> do something else now. Um, I also did like his bit when everyone was rating the everyone when they were like, oh, yeah, minus 54, you know, only worth 45 points for Tama. You know, Yamazaki, I'm going to ding you for that because I think you should have let Hijikata come up with a comeback for that. And then Okita goes like, Hijikata, I'm going to dock you some points because you should have been able to retort from his retort at that exact moment. <laughs> you should have done the same. <laughs> So, very cute episode, and very nice. I liked it. And let's move on to the next episode. And it also was nice for them to uh, bring up the thing that he said back in, like, Thorny Arc, where he just loudly said, like, yeah, I'm the white Yaksha now. And they were like, well, this is awkward. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm, hmm, really? You're part of the the rebellion now? <laughs> well, now that we know that, 
suddenly the 200 plus episodes that we've shared together have all kind of come down to this one moment. So it was very nice for them to follow it up. So let's go on to the next episode. 269, which is a two-parter, starting with, rather than memorizing years, you should burn human beings into your memory. Go ahead, Zen. So this is a weird uh, part A, part B one. Um, I don't love these. Don't know that this one is any real exception to this, but they're at the, um, what's the place called? The, the uh, Yoshiwara. prostitute town. Yeah, Yoshiwara. Um, and Sukoyo is trying to teach Seita history, and it's not doing a very good job. Um, and she's like, well, what, what if I made it cool by uh, adding in knives? And, like, that doesn't help, and it's just a, it's a fucking mess. Um, she just ends up stabbing him a whole bunch. Yeah, and so Gintoki's, they're like, what if Gintoki um, teaches him how to do it, how to do, you know, the history stuff? Um, and so Gintoki, like, puts on glasses and becomes the uh, the kid's, men- like, like tutor. They start calling and him Koro-sensei, right? I think so, yeah. And uh, they end up just not, like, teaching anything accurately he's just like talking about a bunch of bullshit that has nothing to do with what the actual history lesson was um and this causes an argument because they're like what the fuck are you talking about like can you teach him correctly please this is nothing this shit you're saying is nothing um and there's a there's a big fight and he's like oh actually uh, everyone from that time was gorillas which i assume is a reference to the fact that the author is like represented by a gorilla in in like the lore i guess i don't, I don't really know yes the... but also that joke they make about hideyoshi being called being a gorilla they did actually call nobunaga did used to call him monkey that was his nickname so oh, it actually okay. might have been the, the the weirdest like setup to being actually so here's the other thing spoilers for this one there is actually pretty it's pretty accurate what they say here so for some of the bullshit of the history, what I understand from Japanese history, it's not all bullshit. It's a lot of it is like fantasized, like the idea of like, oh yeah, we were just basically monkeys doing shit during Kyo and then stuff happened. Um, but the stuff they talk about, like specifically Hide- um, Hideyoshi being called monkey, that's true. Um, there was the Nobunaga's death, which was that he was burned in Hoshienji. The funny thing is, is that nobody knows why um, Akechi betrayed Nobunaga at Hinoji Enji. They just know that at Hinoji Enji, Nobunaga died in a fire, and it was started by Mitsuhede, which they don't know why, and history still does not know the reasons why. They can only assume, because they were literally, he was like one of the greatest retainers that he had, and nobody knows why. And so the bullshit reason that they came up with here, which is that they put a, the sandals in a microwave and that caused it to burn down, is just as accurate as what actual historians would say, which is, I don't know, <laughs> at some point he just had beef with him now and he killed him. <laughs> Nobody knows why. That's funny. And then there was a battle between Hideyoshi and um, and Mitsuhide afterward for because after he died... It was then they assumed like one of the reasons why that um, uh, Mitsuhide betrayed Nobunaga was the idea that he was going to now be the new shogun or whatever. He was going to rule over it. But that didn't happen because Hideyoshi was there and Hideyoshi had more support and he was able to eventually beat out and he was considered the next in line after Nobunaga. And that's why it went from Nobunaga to then Hideyoshi because he was able to unite Japan basically. And then he didn't really, they all were basically a lot of Japanese history as of this time is that there's some dude trying, Nobunaga wanted to unify Japan. And then that, that does not happen until Iyasu. And then some of the other stuff they talk about the warring States period, like with Kenshin and shit like that. That is true. Kenshin does come from the warring States period. <laughs> that would, that is where Kenshin's name comes from and stuff. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it is a lot of bullshit, and then it ends with them saying, and then the universe died, and that's how we get to the way we are today. And it's like, yeah, that that's it. And then the, the manga that they're, they're talking about is specifically a manga from the uh, Fist of the North Star creator about Japanese history. <laughs> that's why at the end they're like, hey, just just pick up my copy, man. Let's just read from that. And they're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll We'll just do that. 
but that's this episode. Obviously, we have two differing opinions on it for various reasons, so I'm going to let you say what you need to say about the episode right here. How do you feel about this one, Zed? <laughs> it was just... I don't really love the two-parters. They're always just kind of nothing episodes. They feel like mm-hmm. filler episodes from, like, a sitcom mm-hmm. where, like, nothing nothing ever really happens. Um, it's fine. I liked the Koro Sensei reference. <laughs> Koro Sensei reference is nice. This is an interesting one because this apparently was based off of a chapter, but this definitely feels like a chapter of like uh, from a ga- from a gag manga where they're like, "Here's the joke," and it's like, "All right," and we're done with that after nineteen cha- after nineteen pages. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> we're done here. So it's funny that they actually still try and actually translate them because it's really funny because in a lot of gag mangas, what most people consider filler. That's just the actual content from inside of it, because it's mostly a lot of jokes. Um, and I like the way that they adapted this one. Like I said, it's probably only because Fate Grand Order has given me a, the slightest bit of history, and at some point it caused me to actually look up a lot of stuff about the Warring States period, and specifically uh, Hinoji Enji. Even, I even know a little bit about Heinkyo for some stupid reason, even though none of my actual knowledge of Heinkyo is fully known. Um, I thought the way that they adapted was very funny, and it was actually very nice. Like, the idea of, like, oh, yeah, the sandals and the Excalibur. It's all very, like, fantastical, but as they were saying, as they were going through it, there is bits of it that is real, and that's enough to actually make the kid remember. Like, he doesn't remember anything when you try and tell him, like, oh, yeah, during this period, these characters were here, and this, this. Doesn't remember shit. But if you tell a kid there was a bunch of gorillas, and they went into warfare... They will remember some bits of history because now it turns into something completely different. <laughs> so anyway, that was part one. Let's go. And I, just like you, I also like the Koro Sensei. I, even though I've never seen Assassination Classroom, that's all because of um, <laughs> that's all because of work collection, baby. That's the reason I like Koro <laughs> Sensei. <laughs> Bro, he was so fast back in the day. His special attack was. <laughs> was crazy fast i can't believe they never were able to give him a a jump festival exclusive character we could have had so much more but anyway speaking of uh something slightly related to or collection let's talk about the second part of this episode (laughs) because i get to tell this story again episode 269 you can hide your erotic books but you can't hide your porn go ahead zen so uh Shinpachi is asked by his friend um, Taka to hold on to his porno manga um, because his parents can't find out. So now he has to hide it from his sister. So he goes to Gintoki and he's like, dude, I gotta hide all this porn from my sister. What do I do? Uh, And he's like, all right. All right. uh, Wash your hands. He says, wash your hands first. (laughs) (laughs) Which is really funny. Um... At first, he's like, I can't believe you don't know how to do this. What do you mean you, of all people, don't know how to hide porn <laughs> And he's like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and so Kentoki's like, all right, we're going to obviously move stuff around and everything and figure it out. Um, and they end up turning the room into, like, uh, an S&M room with, like, but, like, a bunch of gear and stuff. And he's, like, hanging by rope from the ceiling. Um and he's like, no, no, this is perfect, uh, Shinpachi, because the room is going to draw all the attention away from the magazine. <laughs> um, and they're like, all right, what if you camouflage them as a birthday present for uh, for Otai? And he's like, no. <laughs> and so then he goes, what if you set them all up as a set of dominoes? So then when she opens the door, she'll accidentally knock all your dominoes over and she'll feel so bad she won't pay any attention to it. Um the the manga i think is a two love rue like knockoff yeah it's like a parent like a the, yeah whole love rue Ru. i almost died when if when i saw that this episode was based around a porno mag and then they showed two love rue <laughs> almost died on the spot the, the, it was the funniest reveal that they could have done and then um i think he goes to put it on a bookshelf and kentoki's like you can't put porn next to dragon ball <laughs> Yeah, no, um, he, he says at the beginning, um, when you're trying to find a place to find porn, you just don't put it next to Dragon Ball. Yeah, you can't just put porn next to Dragon Ball. <laughs> um, and then, uh, eventually, like, wait a minute, 
this isn't porn, so it's fine. We can just put it next to Dragon Ball. Uh, and they do that, and they leave, and then Otai opens up and sees that all of the S&M equipment is still in there, and they're like, oh my god, we didn't clean up the room. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny. Um, so yeah, how do you feel about this one, Zed? Uh, it was really good. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite two-parters. The, the funniest thing in Gintoki has ever said in a while is when he goes, you do not put porn next to Dragon Ball. <laughs> and he has, like, a really serious face on. <laughs> it is very really funny. funny. Th- this is maybe the, really the, good. the funniest part two or, that we've ever had for a two-part one, where it was, like, part one and a part two. This is definitely the strongest of all. <laughs> um, it is absolutely funny. Like, really good. The, the setup here, first of all, because the, when you look at it, you think, like, obviously he has porn. But then the reveal that it's actually to Love Rue is hilarious. So, um, the reason I said that this is, well, to go more into it. I also like that when he says it, like, listen, man, there comes a point in every kid's life where they go through a Shonen Jump phase. Like, back in the day, I was a video girl. I had a video girl phase, which is video girl AI, which is the... Which you may remember from her amazing starring turn in <laughs> Shonen Jump or collection as the one of the buffers for the intelligence, not for intelligence. What is purple? What was purple called there? Was it intelligence? It was intelligence, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the buffer for intelligence back in uh, or collection days. Uh, and was also a famous, one of the most famous harem comedies back in the day. Um, I also like that they made a whole bunch. So a lot of this. T- changes depending on how much you know about to love Roo. if you don't know to love Roo is infamous for how much shit it has in it um it actually got in trouble the the, the thing they say here at the end where it's like no one would ever think to love Roo is porn by looking at the cover to love Roo in 2012 g- got sued because someone said that it might have violated the newly passed bill that they did because a parent found to a cover of To Love Roo while cleaning her son's room and said that there was frontal nudity of a female cl- of a female character including her lower body so they had to have a whole meeting to discuss whether or not that this was in violation of the newly passed law basically and the law was basically saying no um it doesn't. It's okay. That was back in 2012. And then in 2014, the ninth volume actually was officially designated as having a harmful publication. Because <laughs> it was <laughs> a, it was seen as that bad for it. And then in 2022, Australia just straight up, straight up said for volumes 2 to 13 of 2 Love Rue and 15, we ain't just... Th- th- no, just no. They just said, We're na- you can't sell this here. They literally said, you cannot sell this here. <laughs> So tell to Love Roo has a huge reputation for what it is. Um and it also has the other crazy uh reputation that it has. Do you remember what I told you about to Love Roo back in Shonen Jump or Collection Days? Back when we did Shonen or Smorgasbord? Mm-hmm. Which was the, the Yes, that was the old show. Which was the story of this is the manga where they had to make a new series because the wife of the of the artist sued like left them and tried to sue the actual people trying to ask for more money because she said one of the main characters was based on her and it was in fact based on her because that's the reason why he drew her so then they had to start over the manga to not accidentally keep having to pay her a fee to keep using them it started like this whole rabbit hole of like looking through it but where back in the day we said basically his wife got the character in the divorce which is oh, why Oh, that's the- right. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Yes. Funny yes, it is very funny. It's not very funny what happened to him cuz I've tried to look up more about it and it looked up like, "Oh, this is a way. I did not know that his his daughter was kidnapped during all this. How much of this oh. is real?" Oh. Like the, the, of like, okay, <laughs> oh. so the wife was cheating on him and then she took the daughter and hold her for ransom and then this and then I'm like, "Is there any verifiable information on this?" He's like, "Do you read Japanese uh uh, can you read Japanese ma- uh, magazines from back in the day that were like gossip rags? I'm like, you know, I can't internet. I I cannot find the information for it, but that is the basic idea for it. Um, so to love Rue in a lot of ways is very funny. And also a lot of people have also called it in general, <laughs> thinly veiled hentai. So the fact that they used it for this episode about uh, hiding your porno mags is very funny. 
<laughs> Even the line of him saying, like, ignore what they say. What, what would a woman know of two love Rue's greatness, of whole love Rue's greatness? This is also another line from another manga, which is, I think, what is the one uh, that the Death Note writer made that was about making manga? Baka. God, I have no idea. Bakadama, something like that. Anyway, one of the, they made a manga artist, and inside there, there was a specific chapter about Two Love Ru as well, where they said like, um, Two Love Ru is a truly a man's a man's manga, <laughs> for what it is. So I found it. That's I found it. Really yeah. So I like that the whole subject was based around the idea of like Shinpachi's at that age now where he can finally see the reason why horror mangas are included with Shonen Jump and why they're included in there and why they can get away with showing uncensored nipple. And it reminded me of my favorite one of those, which is of course Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs. One of the greatest. Hope to one day cover it, even though I think that uh, that anime is very close to just being straight up porn <laughs> more than what it is for Two Love Room. <laughs> I don't think they ever animated any of the cool action stuff from from Yuna. They never got that far. They stopped at the porn parts. That's so funny to me. I don't know why. That's hilarious. It is hilarious. Like, I'm not joking when I say Yuna has some of the best fight scenes imaginable, but it doesn't happen for over 150 chapters, and there was no way in hell that anime was going to make it in time. That's brutal. <laughs> It is. It's hilarious. But I also am a fan of the, the, the harm stuff in it. And I like the characters. But either way, that's neither here nor there. And just like you said, the the the, the, the Schrodinger's... Uh, not Schrodinger's. Uh, Chekhov's Dragon Ball manga reference at the beginning. Where he says you can't put porn <laughs> next to Dragon Ball. And then the end of the episode is him putting to Love Rue right next to Dragon next Ball. Next to Dragon Ball, yeah. <laughs> oh, the shelf was so funny. I was like, oh my god. The, the way they looked at each other was like, wait a minute, there's nothing like... If you just look at this, this doesn't look like porn. You'd have to actually look inside the contents of it. Ay. And they both have like a feeling of like, yeah, man, we did it. We yeah, solved- like, we, we-, we got it. We did this. <laughs> we solved the case. <laughs> so fucking funny. And then all the bits here... I don't know how well this plays if you're a woman... But all the bits here about the dudes hiding their port stash and the way they goes like, oh my god, Shinpachi, you're amateur hour stuff right here. It's like the reason why the PTA has never come after you is because right now you're into some vanilla shit right now. You're like into catalogs. This is nothing. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, you're probably right. I'm not as good as hiding as I thought I was. That was really good, and I don't know. There's something nostalgic about this. I don't think people do this anymore, right? The idea of like hiding porno mags—it's well, it's not, not a thing. No one gets porno mags anymore. <laughs> no, at this point, it's just like um, I don't know. Delete it off your computer or whatever you use your thing for. I don't know what I don't know what the kids are doing nowadays. I don't know. But it is slightly nostalgic to an old time of like, oh yeah, if you wanted to keep something around, uh. You had to hide that shit and make sure that no one could find it. Uh, very fun, very fun indeed. So yeah, I, li- I like this episode. This might this might be one of my if I if I was gonna do like of the comedy bits, this might be one of my favorite ones. It, I think the setup for it is amazing. The premise for it is amazing. The putting it next to Dragon Ball and it also makes it so funny that the first uh, book of Dragon Ball also features nudity in it of Bulma. <laughs> There's, like, multiple shots of Bulma from her ass to her boobs just full-on display on Dragon Ball. I thought that was also, like, funny. It's obviously accidental. It's not like they were making a statement of it, but I just thought it was funny. It was like, wait, well, wait a minute. If you actually go back to old Dragon Ball, it also had a lot of, like, questionable things on it. But you would never guess it from looking at the cover of Dragon Ball that it had any of that stuff. Like, there's just no way to tell. But anyway, <clears throat> that's the end shonen archive this week and that's the end of episode 269 we did it zen another week gone by another one down yeah baby so let's talk about what we would happen the next time we have this show which hopefully is next week we have well let me see next week because at some point i have to realize i have to go away for um it's a little bit of a crazy month because uh i have to get ready to move some stuff because i'm going to be moving to a bigger uh, apartment that's near me and I also have to get ready for 13 Nights of Halloween, which is there's some stuff that me and Zen have to watch specifically to make sure that that happens. Um, 
And I also have to get ready for my trip to Vegas in Magic the, to MagicCon, which is going to be in like three weeks' time from when we are recording this, which we record these on Wednesdays. So by this point on, maybe we'd be able to switch to fill in something else, but we'll see. Um, in theory, this is what's going to be coming up next. Episode 270. Episode 271, 272, which will feature the Patriot reunion arc. And then episode 273 and 274, and that will be a five-episode block. And then after that, it'll be another four-episode block, as we have a three-episode arc and then a one-episode to just put it, put it next to each other. And then we will have another three-episode arc with another one-off episode and then we'll go back to doing the two, five at a time, I think, from that point on. And then we'll be able to get to... Oh, actually, we'll see on this one, because there's some that we need to look forward to. Basically, a lot of the beginnings of this specific season is going to be a lot of, like, group pairings. Because we're going to get ready for the last two big arcs in this specific um, season. Which one of them, which is going to happen around episode 200, of well, episode 200, 300... Which one of them is the Shogun assassin assassination arc, which is seven episodes. And then the next arc, which is going to be eight episodes, is the Farewell Shinsengumi arc. So we have to, like, specifically quarter them off in specific ways um, to make sure that it all fits. And that we will likely feature... And I think that might be, for the time being, the last time we will have to do... Okay, no, that's not true. <laughs> that is not true. Um, we'll figure it out, though. I was going to say that that is going to be the last time that we're going to have to watch a bunch of episodes at one go. But no, the the, the arc that follows the Farewell Shinsengumi arc is another... Yeah, these are a bunch of episodes that we will likely have to watch together as we get closer to the end of uh, the final arc, which is the Silver Soul arc, which I've we've talked about it before with other people who have seen it. That one's okay to break up so that we don't have to watch ten, over 10 episodes. <laughs> Yeah, that would be pretty brutal. Yeah, over 10 episodes, just so that the final episode we can say, all right, that was the final arc of Gintama. I can't wait to finish the story in the movie. That is <laughs> that is something that we would have to deal with. But thankfully, that is not what we're going to have to deal with. So that's what it's looking like for Shonen Archive in the upcoming future. It's time to do some wrap-up stuff. Uh, Zen, where can they find you? They can find you over in your channel where you do what? Uh, we do Shonen and Chill and Wrestling and Chill, where we talk about manga and or WWE. Yeah, baby. Where we talk about uh, everything from the why. It, oh, we can only speak for the wrestling part. I'm not there for the manga part. <laughs> I can only speak for the wrestling part. Where we talk about <laughs> the current ongoing opinions of Rikishi and his how he feels about yes, the, the, the endless uh, thoughts of Rikishi. Exactly. It was you go like, what did Rikishi say this week? My favorite segment that has showed up for us as we started doing it. A uh, lot of fun. A lot of fun. And uh, over on my... Is there anything going on? Oh, yeah, there is stuff that's going on. It's the end. Uh, JJ, are you going to do another video for like you did for My Hero for the end of JJK? Uh, we are. We are going to talk about the end of Jujutsu Kaisen. Hmm. Okay, well, well, we'll go for there. You'll, if you want to hear my opinions about the end of Jujutsu Kaisen, wait till we get to the anime and we have to experience it again. Because <laughs> <laughs> by then, we'll see how Real. I feel about it. Yeah, but for right now, I'm definitely feeling of... Hmm. It's a, it's a crazy thing to be done after since starting it from 2018, from when it started, back when it was fan translators going, I don't want to do this anymore, to where it is now, where it's people... Uh, throwing mad copium theories about characters inside of it it was it's been a hell of a journey yes. so look forward to hearing from zen and his specific thoughts about the uh manga ending it's also a real shame that that again it's so sad with the leak shit but i really would have wished it would have happened on sunday so it would be easier to be like hey everyone gets to experience it at the same time but yeah too much to fucking ask apparently too much to fucking ask, correct. When you got people leaking, not even leaking, putting watermarks on drawings that someone else did. That is the like, most insane fucking thing ever, that they were just like, yeah, let's just slap a watermark on this. Yeah, I was like, I, I cannot uh, Because it. it's, it's my leak, so I'm putting the watermark. It's, it's insane, dude. Insane. I, I, I was about to come out of Photoshop retirement and be like, I'm going to fucking remove your leak. 
I'm gonna put your, <laughs> remove your logo. I was gonna go deep in there and specifically erase it out so that it looked exactly like it, just that their fucking logo was gone because I was that angry about it. But then someone else already uploaded a much better quality of it and without the logo. I was like, finally, someone with at least some fucking sense of something. The yeah, Madden. It's- the it's madness so has to fucking stop. insane, dude. It is. The madness has to stop, and hopefully it stops here, and Kagurabachi never has to go through it, because now I'm they're... I'm so sick of leakers, bro. No, I'm, I'm with you. I don't like them. They're such ass. They are 100% ass. It is big time suck. And it's... Oh, fuck. There's just too much. It's 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 really... it's It's... Again... It would be, again, during the early days of Jujutsu Kaisen, it was a different story. But then once it became as big as it did, it it got out of control. It was no longer about, like, hey, we need to support the little one that someone has to do it. It then became, this thing is big enough, how do I exploit it? Which is just, like, a different feeling of it. But on the face value, you can't see that. All people see is that, like, obviously we did it from the beginning, it's okay now. But oh, it's such a tiring conversation, too. It's so tiring. <laughs> Because there's no real end to it in sight. But anyway, look over the Zen's channel to see that. Uh, and then on my side, it's Halloween time, baby. So that means I'm preparing a whole bunch of stuff. I'm still doing, as always, the Fago stuff. Where I talk about Fago things, it is the last uh, calm week as I talk about, like, hey, some Halloween stuff. Upcoming is a bunch of uh, units that are like, holy shit, catch these units now while you have the chance. But for right now, it's a lot of just like, yo, chill vibes, Halloween time, all, all good stuff. Uh, and for future stuff in the channel, I am, of course, preparing for 13 Nights of Halloween. Um, some of it some of it has started recording, and some others I have to track down the people. Because, of course, Sparking Zero is about to come out, and I'm going to lose a good chunk of people for a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's about that time. Dragon Ball video yep. game time. I basically need to hit up D for you and be like, yo, dude, find some time. And he says hey he will, but at the same time I'm like, well, I know for a fact that you cover Dragon Ball stuff. So <laughs> You will be hitting Sparking Zero. Yeah, you'll he'll be one hundred percent ready for it and doing whatever. Um so I'm like, I need to get you on here before because as always, every year it has D free and every year it also has you in some capacity. I think there was like maybe one year that was not you in there, but I wanna say we did something and I just can't find it. We did something we did the spooktacular probably and that counts as my yeah. the model yeah, thing. Probably. And this year we'll be continuing doing the theme of watching some old commercials from around the Halloween time and then Finding two public horror, two public domain horror movies to watch over on Twitch. <laughs> Which I'm looking forward to it. I'm trying to still decide between some of the, some of them. Some of them I have watched already. After the, the last experience we had watching a public domain movie together, um, I have to win back your trust after showing you uh, Santa Claus <laughs> and the Ice Cream Bunny. After, that after... would be great. Yeah. <laughs> that was a hell of a film. That was a hell of a film. That was uh that was an amazing. You can find that video up on on my channel somewhere. Oh, I loved every second of it, but I could feel you dying by the end of it. I could I, I could actively feel you dying. Yeah, it was it was rough, man. It, it was, was real rough. It was real rough, but uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. And yeah, we'll see. I, I've gotten into some other stuff while I was off offline, just to say it. I'm not sure if I'll make video stuff of it. Obviously, I already did a video of Final Fantasy 16 because I was playing through it. Um, I have to get back to it because I ended up getting into uh, uh, Zenless Zone Zero as a joke with my brother. And then I played it, and I said, this is actually perfectly fine. And so I kept playing more of it, and I was like, well, this isn't a joke anymore. Let me just download this on PC and play it. <laughs> and try and get caught up to it it's like uh it's annoying to me because i was like man i really did try to get into honkai star rail because they're having the fate thing and that just lines up yeah, with literally the, everything the fate event. it yeah. literally lines up with everything i do this would be the perfect slam dunk for me and i just could not get into it for some reason I, it wasn't the combat i like the combat but something about it i just wasn't feeling it and i don't know why I've been trying to find out why, because I was like, why am I able to get into... Is it the boobs? It can't be the boobs, because there's very pretty women in Honkai Star Rail as well. There are so very th- pretty women, yeah. There are, and I'm like, that's not the barrier. They have perfectly beautiful women on there. What is... What was it? Is it just the sci-fi thing? Was it the traversing Man, that's world? a shame, because that, that would be like our, our worlds cross it over when the Fate thing comes out. I mean, I'll still be there for when the Fate thing, because I'll be up there to say, like, okay, let me tell you everything about this. 
And then people can yell at me for saying, like, oh, yeah, I only watched the, the shitty anime version of it. I didn't actually bother to read the VN. If you want to get me to read the VN, you have to get to my subscriber goal. And then, <laughs> and then I'll do the VN. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> back when I made it, Fate Stay Night was a pain in the ass to actually download. It isn't like today where um, you can just get it on Steam and it's fine. Back in the day, you had to set your computer to be Japanese and like install it and do it and that was the way to get fate stay night to actually get working on your pc and it was a hell of a process so i said i'm just never gonna bother reading this vn ever and i've just made my peace with it i'm only gonna watch the anime which was a terrible adaptation of it and that will be perfectly fine with it and that's the way i'm gonna <laughs> that's the way i choose to live my life <laughs> It would be the, I guess the equivalent of it is trying to be like, what if Dragon Ball wasn't actually available in manga form? And the only way I was actually able to experience it was through the um, big green dub. And that was the way I decided to always go forward referencing Dragon Ball. That's the way I got into fame. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever works. It does. Whatever works. But yeah, I really did try. I, I really did try. And it was the, con I think the combat is fun. But something about it just isn't grabbing me at the right level. Maybe it's something that I have to try again later. Maybe closer to when the, the banner's coming out. Um, we'll see. And yeah, that's the end of it, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for Shonen Archive this week. Hopefully we'll be back next week. But if not next week, two weeks' time. And if not by two weeks' time, it likely won't happen because I'm preparing for everything. But hey, <laughs> if we can figure out a way to do it, we will do it. <laughs> We can guarantee we'll, we'll, you. We'll, we'll get it done somehow. Yeah. <laughs> somehow, we'll get, some way. Exactly. Just like Gintama, we find a way. And that's it for this week. So why don't you say goodbye, Zen? Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>